policy opened up in 1900, at which time we served both boys and girls. Around 1914, they established the girls' school in Ocala. So uh, since 1914, we have had uh, boys. I would say that the real growth of the program, so to speak, began shortly after World War II, uh, a big building program, a big personnel program, uh, until we've grown to this point where we have over 100 buildings and nearly 200 uh, people representing nearly every discipline and re uh, representing uh, all of the behavioral sciences. <laughs>
morning, we all get up and we make our beds neatly and then we can all go in, get dressed, and then we uh, clean the building up and get on the benches and we go to breakfast and when we come back from breakfast, we all brush our teeth and then um, we fall out and go to school with our crew. Well, I'm taking woodworking crew here and uh, we make chairs and stuff and so forth for the cottage, cabinets, and all repairs and things like that we have to do around campus here. We take them down to our shop, our industrial art shop, and repair them. I want to, I'd like to be in the upholstery business with cover chairs and couches, stools and stuff like that. We have a real good rating system here, and we get, we start from the bottom and we work up. And uh, the person on pilot, uh, that's next to the highest rank. It gives you special privileges, like pioneers get to go uptown to the show once every uh, two weeks, and pilots just get to go every week. That is a store we have up here to go and buy candy and toothpaste and hell and different items like that we need around here at the cottage. Boys that uh, don't have parents or the mothers and fathers don't send the money up to them. The, uh, the crew instructors or the cottage fathers check them out to do work around the cottage and they give them a 50 cent, a dollar, something like that and they put it in the bank for them and then they're allowed to spend it out of the bank. You're Johnny Smith? Yes, sir. Johnny, I'm Mr. Miller, director of the guidance center. I'd like to talk with you for a few minutes this morning. I know you just came into the school, and I'm sure you have some feelings about coming up here. Uh, I'd like to talk with you about this, and I'd like to talk with you about your background some. 
we keep records on each boy in the school here in the guidance center and you may have some problems, some difficulties while you're here that you want to talk with one of the caseworkers about. And the information I'd like to get from you this morning is confidential for our files and it's to help us understand you and, and help us to be able to help you with your problems as they come along. See, I believe you're 14 years old, aren't yes, you? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start off with uh, a little bit about your background as far as delinquency is concerned. Uh, what types of trouble have you gotten into? Well, me and my brother-in-law, we stole a car one time. He, he really stole the car, but I was with him when it happened. And I broke in a few stores, things like that. Breaking and entering and stealing cars? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And did you steal anything when you broke into the stores? Yes, sir. Some cameras and radios and things like that. Uh, well, that would be classified as petty larceny. Uh, tell me this, Johnny. Why do you think that you do things like this? Well, for one, it's, it's staying with other boys. It, it, I know it does these things. You and think really uh, your, the other boys' influence on you had something to do with this? Yes, sir. I didn't really think it would happen to me, but it turned out it did. Had you been before the court several times? Yes, sir, three times, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Then you had some idea that you would have to come up here if you uh, stayed in trouble. Yes, stayed sir. You knew if I kept it up, it happened. Mm -hmm. Well, why do you think that, uh, that it was that you kept on? Didn't you really think that they would send you up here? Yes, sir, some, in some ways and some ways not. <clears throat> These boys, uh, of course, by reason of the fact that they have been adjudicated delinquent, many of them uh, have experienced profound difficulties in the community and carry this pattern of behavior over into the institution. Now, if, if this may be called a business, so to speak, we are in the business of working with youngsters with problems. As such, then, uh, our staff, the people who work here, are held, uh, highly skilled and working with youngsters. So in terms of discipline, we feel that uh, discipline first must come from within. Uh, staff members talk with youngsters and 90% of the problems are resolved through uh, staff members correcting boys, pointing out the implications of their behavior. In terms of uh, discipline per se, if the youngster really works at it and uh, goes off on a toot, as we say, uh, we have several alternatives. We Normally, we would deprive them of privileges uh, going to canteen, swimming privileges, and what have you. He still misbehaves. We have uh, uh, some other alternatives. We do have uh, 10 detention rooms, which are not jail cells. We uh, have those that we may employ, or in some instances, uh, uh, we are authorized by the Board of Commissioners to uh, spank youngsters, although it's not too frequent. We don't, and the reason for it is that we feel that we are trying to teach that there is dignity in labor. Uh, because all of these boys are going to leave, they're going to go to communities, they're going, hopefully will marry and support families, they're going to have to work. And if we're going to teach that all of us must work and that there is dignity in labor, I don't think we're going to accomplish this by using work as a punishment or disciplinary measure. <laughs> Let us continue our worship service by hearing the word of God read to us by Gene Prather. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the lands. 
serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are the people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Let us pray. Our Father, go with us to our place of activity. May the false spirit of thought here bless us and guide us as our spirit goes with us. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. <laughs> extreme pleasure to have this opportunity to talk to citizens of Florida about their training schools, particularly after they've had this opportunity to see something of the reality of the training for these youngsters that we are trying to provide in our schools. These scenes have been, of course, from the School for Boys at Mariana, but the Division of Child Training Schools has responsibility for all of Florida's training schools for boys and girls. We hope that you have been pleased with what you have seen, but I would prefer to take these few moments to point out to you some of the things which we need to make our programs even more effective. A legislature is coming up, and of course, it is from the legislature that we receive the tools with which we are able to do an effective job. I consider the problems we face in the division in providing the kind of service that the juvenile courts of the state need to be threefold. Primarily, though, they might be uh, classed as the same in most Florida's programs dealing with people. They are based on the so-called population explosion or the tremendous population growth and therefore deal with the quantity of services available and we think the quality of services available. As of the current date, we have over 300 youngsters in Florida who have been duly committed to training schools by the juvenile courts, but are now awaiting uh, admission to the schools and having to be held either in detention homes, if such are available, or in many too often, most too often, in jails. This is because we do not have vac vacant beds in the four schools in Florida. In order to try to correct this situation, we have recommended to the legislature that an aftercare program be implemented. Fortunately, this aftercare program uh, was passed by the legislature in 1963, but due to the tight money situation, funds were not available with which to implement it. This, we hope, will be accomplished. We have estimated that with a good statewide uniform system of aftercare, which incidentally is in effect in all states, with the exception of possibly four in the nation, that we can serve 20% more children than we are able, to, with our same facilities, than we are able to serve now. We feel that this is a matter that the public should be concerned about. There are other needs for the future in the way of an additional training school for boys, which we will go into with the legislature, but for our immediate relief, we feel that the aftercare program is of utmost importance.
Thank you.